Again, brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, Abduhu was the Inuhu, was the Dihi, was the Piruhu, was Shadu Allah, Waktuhu, La Sharikullahu, was Shadu and Muhammadan Abduhu, was Rasulullah. Praise is due to Allah, I praise Him, I seek His assistance, and I beseech His guidance. And I ask for His forgiveness. I bear witness that there is no deity but Allah, the One. He has no associates. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. Amen. Alhamdulillah. I want to start, brothers and sisters, from reading Surah 16, Ayats 68 through 69. And it reads, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And thy Lord revealed to the bee, make hives in the mountains, and the trees, and in what they build. Then eat all the fruits, and walk in the way of your Lord, submissively. There comes forth from their bellies a beverage of many hues, in which there is healing for man. Therein is surely a sign for people who reflect. Sadaqallah, then surely Allah speaks the truth. So, Allah is always telling us to reflect, to think, to ponder. And people access the Quran very different, uh, differently from what is the real purpose of the revelation. In general, very few people know the contents of the Quran in the Islamic world. In the 52nd ayat of Surah Ibrahim, Allah states, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, this is a communication to be transmitted to mankind so that they can be warned by it and so that they will know that he is one God and so that the people of intelligence will pay heed. Sadaqallah ar-Din Allah speaks the truth. So, we're going to go into talking about signs today that Allah has revealed to us. And in many ayats, Allah emphasized that one of the most crucial purposes of the Quran's revelation is to invite people to ponder, to think, to think. In the Quran, Allah invites people to reject blindly accepting the beliefs and values society imposes upon them and to ponder by pushing aside all the prejudices, taboos, and constraints on their minds. We should perceive that the entire universe, including ourselves, is created by a superior power. Even when we examine our own bodies or any other thing in nature, you will see an impressive harmony, plan, and wisdom at work within its design. Everything that Allah created is perfect. The designs are perfect. The signs are there for us to take heed, to think, to ponder. It's very important. Allah says it all through the Quran. So those who can observe and remember will see that the entire universe is only composed of the signs of Allah. The whole universe is number signs of Allah. This is the responsibility of all of us to be able to see the signs of Allah. Now let's look at one of these signs. I mentioned the first ayat about the bee. Now let's look at the social life of the bees. Okay? A lot of them put that in there for no reason. It must want you to look at the bees and look at the signs for a reason. Bees carry out numerous 
task and they manage them all with excellent organization. Excellent organization. And you know, I like the story that I uh, mentioned at first about the bee because it speaks about many signs. And that's what I want to touch on today, signs, like I said, okay? Are you aware that bees, they worked in teams, they worked in teams or in groups, just like the ants, and Allah speaks about the ants also in the Quran. These are workers. Bees and ants are the greatest builders. They are the greatest, but if you study the signs of the ants and bees, you see they are the greatest builders, okay? The ants are very strong also. They have a system set up. Now, I won't go into detail about the ant, but I will mention just a little about them. Ants, they're very smart. They send out a drone to check out something, and that's when the whole posse comes out. <laughs> Guys say, okay, it's okay. Let's go out, man. You know, I see something that we can use. And they have soldier ants. And they work together, and all of them have a different task, you see. They work together to get food. They build tunnels underneath the earth. They do as a law instructed them to do. And if we operated like the ants and the bees, we ourselves would know how to build civilizations and colonies if we worked like them. We would know how to work together in a civilized order, on a higher frequency. Bees and ants work on a frequency. All nature has a certain frequency, believe it or not. You and I both have frequencies, okay? But this frequency is of a higher order. So, but many look more at the animal kingdom. Well, most men, they look at the animal kingdom and study that and take on the expression of a lower being that we shouldn't be tapping into as our representative, as a representative. It's the ants and the bees that we should be tapping into rather than us trying to be like a line in the pack on the street, okay? That's the way some of us like to be. The lion will not attack a group of zebras because they can get kicked in the head and it'll be over for the uh, lion. So the lion, he goes for the one who's alone. So we as a people have to move together in groups. We have to move together in groups. We don't want, we don't need to be out there solo by ourselves. We, all of us, Muslims, have to work together in a group. The most powerful beings on the planet work together in groups. It's called Harambe in Swahili. They pull together in teams, okay? It's not about you and me as separatists. It's about us coming together, maybe creating our own society from everyone else. That would be powerful. We have to come together and be creators. We are the little creators, okay? We as a people always have to go to other societies for our needs. Why do we have to go to everybody for our needs? Huh? Why are we going to the Yahudi, the European, the Indian, or whoever? We always go to everybody for our needs. No, we shouldn't. We have to build our own. Produce our own. I said, we have to pull together in teams like the ants and the bees. We have to sit together and brainstorm on how to build our communities. Some of us want to be like dogs and lions. And that's not going to work. We have to stop being like animals and be more like the insects. Insects know how to work together. They know how to work together. 
animals are always fighting at times, sometimes killing each other, okay? But if you study the ant or the bee, you're studying two of the most intelligent beings on the earth. Yes, that's why Allah speaks about them in the Quran. It's important. That's what we got to read this Quran. This Quran is so powerful. There's so much in there. There's so much science in there. I mean, just to really benefit us, it shows how to live in society, how to big, build society, how to be better Muslims. You see? We should be way far ahead than where we are now. But we're lagging behind. The Western got further, further uh, 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 in advancement than we have. You see? So we as a people are suffering from what they call colony collapse. Now, let's go back to the bee. We don't use the queen bee as an example. When you take the female, the queen bee, and disrupt her natural flow, everybody and everything in her colony collapses. The queen bee, okay? How does the bees operate? Bees are very intelligent. The Quran tells you that. The bees have an order. Now let's look at the queen bee again. She says to the other bees, this is how the bees operate. Look, I need you to get out there and get some pollen from a farm that's five miles away. There's some petunias out there. Go get that pollen. Go get that pollen and bring it back to me. This is the queen bee discussing to the other bees. And bees usually have to fly long distances, okay? and scan large areas to find food. They collect flour, pollen, and the constituents of honey within a certain range. A bee which finds flowers flies back to its hive to let the others know about their place where they can find this pollen. Now how do bees describe the location of the flowers to the other bees in the hive. This will show, show how Allah made this bee so intelligent, okay? You know how they find when one of the scouts come back to let the other bees know where these flowers and pollen is at? They do a dance. The bee performs a dance. The dance repeated many times by the bee, includes all the information about inclination, direction, distance, and other details. It's a dance. You ever watch bees? They look like they're flying or with this zigzagging and stuff. It's actually a dance. Letting the other bees know what's happening, where to find this stuff. So this dance is actually like, uh, like a figure eight. If you watch like a figure eight, and, and you know, Papa Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was number eight <laughs> after those other seven prophets, that he went on those levels and led them in prayer. Anyway, the bee forms the middle part of the figure eight by wagging its tail and performing zigzags, and the line between the sun and the hive gives the exact direction of the food source. And, you know, there's much more to this dance. I can't go into a lot of detail because we're limited in time. And I want to get you out of here on time. Okay? So the bees, they're given to do exactly what the queen bee says to do. Except you might get one or two decides he's going to do something else. He might say, man, I'm not going over there five miles away to collect no pollen. There's some dandelions right here in the front yard. I'll just get that and bring that back, okay? So the bee comes back to the hive, and the queen bee, 
She can smell the pollen. She can feel it. And she says to the other bees, go get him and bring his behind back here. And he's like, oh, God, please, please, queen. <laughs> you know, you done bought the wrong pollen. You bought the wrong pollen. So you know what she does? She stings that bee to death and eats them and feeds them to the babies. And she says, don't you ever bring something other than what I tell you to get. Okay? So brothers, listen to the queens. <laughs> okay? Listen to the queens. <laughs> Take heed. Queens are smart. <laughs> so it's the pollen. He might say, oh, he might have said, oh, it's the same pollen. It's not. The queen bee knows the season. She knows the way the wind is blowing. She knows things about the cosmos. When the energy from the stars has been traveling for billions of years. Some of those stars aren't even there no more. But she knows when the stars, like Sirius, the star Sirius. You read about Sirius in the Quran. Allah mentioned Sirius. He didn't mention that star for nothing. That, that's, that's a powerful star, Sirius. Sirius rises, okay, and Sirius falls, and she knows the position of the star. So everything is changing. You have to be ready to change in the moment. The queen, she's able to really realize what's happening in the moment. So we need, we need order. We, we need order. What we need right now in our community is organization. We need to follow the universal law that Allah put in place. Allah put a universal law in place. Okay, and if you look at the ancient villages, the way they were set up, the way the ancient villages were set up, very scientific. Not like what you, what you see here, they were very scientific about the way they built their villages. A lot of them were set up in spirals. And spirals are another science. I'm not going to go into it, but you need to study what spirals are all about. And, you know, we go in spirals when you go to the Kaaba. You're going right to left, right? You're circling that Kaaba. It's a spiral. But anyway, so they, the ancients, they set up their places in spirals. And they were actually sacred geometry. If you looked at them from the sky, you just didn't, if you looked at them from the sky, it, it's like sacred geometry, the way they built them, okay? So you just didn't build a hut here just because you wanted to build a hut. You had to look at the ley line, the energetic field, the magnetic flux of the planet. You had to look at the stars. You're looking at everything when you build your village, the ancient way they built it. So now you know that this is where your hut should go. This is where you should be. This is where the fire should be. This is where you should plant. We had to be so far from the river. You know, a lot of people in America, they, they build their homes by the river. And guess what? They get flooded. They don't know the science. Folks back then knew you didn't build your villages right by the river. You had to go back. Okay? All this was calculated for their colony. It was organization. They read the signs in creation. And when you go against the signs, you have what they call colony collapse. That's why you have to take heed to the signs. Don't take it lightly. 
Allah put signs in everything. A lot of the world today is going against the signs. And we see so much collapsing. Look at the world today. It's falling apart. They've gone against the signs. And look at all the things that's happened, all the calamities and all these things going on in the world today. We can call that colony collapse disorder. Okay? Now let's look at another sign of creation, from creation. Here's another sign of law put in creation. You ever hear a nymph? There's something called a nymph. Now, Let's say what we've been for the last 6,000 years or more is like the nymph. You might ask, and you're probably saying, so what is a nymph? The nymph is the larva of a dragonfly. Now, I'm talking about winged animals here, okay? The nymph is actually the larva of a dragonfly. The nymph lives in dark murky water and the nymph is always a victim but the nymph is eating everything the nymph is always eating everything the nymph is for years and years fighting it's scared and it it's in fear it's going through drama and emotion they never breathe they don't have lungs. They just exist in that dark, murky water. Then one day they imagine themselves inside and they turn off. The imaginable, the imaginable self has been around the genes. And the genes begin and they begin to move. They have these genes that move. And they look like little ships. This is all science about the nymph. When they begin to move, all of a sudden the nymph crawls up a reed, a little reed. And for the first time, its body splits open and it takes its first breath. Then its eyes pop out. Then its wings, which are all crumpled up, they start to unfold. But it's got to move quick because all kinds of things want to get to this little nymph that's sitting, that's sitting on this reed. Now, the water that it lived in represents the emotions, all the drama, the trauma, all the growth, all the stuff it's been through in the murky water. It now has water in its body. It uses the water from its experience and it pumps like hydraulic pumps through its wings. And the wings are full of drama from the past. Then all of a sudden the sun hits the wings and the sun turns the water into electricity and then it's a dragonfly and it lifts off. And it lives this amazing life of love and beauty. You ever notice a dragonfly? Watch how they fly up in the air and stuff. There's a lot of signs to the dragonfly also. And you know, a dragonfly only lives about two weeks after it becomes a dragonfly. Underwater, it lives about two years as a nymph. So now all it needs to do is send off a vibration they send it off a vibration, a wave that opens the flowers in the morning. The dragonfly sends a vibration that opens the flowers up in the morning. The flowers are listening for a certain tone from the dragonfly and also from other insects and animals. Things like the bees and certain bird sounds open the flowers which bring out the pollen 
you know all those different chirps you hear from birds? Those are different vibrations that are being put out to open up these beautiful flowers. Okay? And the bees, they have that buzzing sound. Right? But all of them have a certain frequency and it affects the flowers. And just like the 21st of March, which is the first day of spring, all of a sudden, all the pine trees in the northern hemisphere pop open. And the male pine flowers put out the semen of the forest, what you call pine pollen. That yellow pollen feeds everything. It has all the nutrients, and the whole forest eats that, and, that, and that's what gives its drive. See, a lot, a lot got everything in perfect order in creation. Everything works together. Everything in the universe is one. Universe, one verse, one I yet. <laughs> All working together. But when you realize that everything is a perfect ecosystem, even our craziness at this time is a part of the even flow and the up and down, the growth and the decline. This always happens, and it depends on your mindset. It depends on your mindset, brothers and sisters. Once you get that, you say to yourself, I'm going to do my very best. I'm not going to follow the crowd. I'm going to elevate myself and show my beauty just like the dragonfly. Huh? I'm going to fly above the nonsense, the murky waters, and send the right vibrations to humanity to help bring out its beauty. That's how we got to do as Muslims. Elevate ourselves. Bring out the best of ourselves. Bring out the beauty. And watch how humanity changes. Send, send out the right vibrations. Yeah, we got vibrations, okay? So humanity can open up and get the best of themselves. It's like the flowers. So now we have to move together in groups and build strong communities, strong colonies, where we won't have colony collapse. We will have order and organization working together like bees and ants steady building. Again, Allah put signs, ayats, all over the creation for you to reflect, to think, to ponder. And Allah says, read in the name of your Lord. So we need to read. Read the creation. Read the Quran. Read. It's going to benefit you. Think. So thinking benefits the thinker. Close part one and off the door. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, wa ala khayru musaleem Muhammad, wa ala alayhi sabihi ajma'in, I'm a bot. Now, in closing, I want to touch on signs that are even in ourselves that Allah put in there. I'm going to give you one example. <clears throat> we all know there's an outer space. There's also an inner space. Let's look at inner space. If you take a cancer cell out of a human body and you put it under a high-powered microscope, 
and you keep bringing up the magnification and the microscope, all of a sudden, you get to this place where the cancer is gone in that cell. And if you keep bringing up the magnification, all of a sudden, all the parts of the cell will be gone. Then all of a sudden, you will see the Big Dipper. You will see the Star Sirius. You will see Orion's Belt, and so on. You don't see the universe there under that microscope. As above, so below. What is inside those cells at the smallest level is everything. It's the same. We have it on the smallest level within ourselves, what we have on the larger level in space. Do you see? That's how Allah made us. Everything in creation is within us. Everything. Allah speaks about it in the Quran. If we read it right, you'll understand. So you will see the same universe set up in space in your body from that one cell. And I want to read Surah 35 by yet one, al the originator. This is letter Rahman Rahim. Praise be to Allah, the originator of the heavens and the earth, the maker of angels, messengers, flying on wings, two, three, and four. He increases in creation what he pleases. Surely Allah is possessor of power over all things. Surely Allah speaks the truth. Now, just to touch on this ayat in closing, I used to wonder why it said angels with two, three, and four wings. You got two even and one odd. So, I ask, maybe it's possible, that the angel's wings, two, three, and four, are a reference here to the rakaz in prayer, which is two in Faja, three in Maghrib, and four in the other, the afternoon prayers and the Isha. Okay? So, I said to myself, maybe that's what Allah is telling us. <laughs> it's those prayers. In prayer, man and woman hold communion with Allah and is raised to spiritual eminence. He and she, as it were, flies to Allah on his wings. And the angels are the agents which make him and her fly to Allah. The wings thus standing for the rakahs in prayer. That's just the way I see it. Inshallah, so, uh, hopefully, maybe that's what it represents. <laughs> okay? So, I want to close. And I pray you all got something out of this that might help you. But remember, think, ponder, reflect, as the Quran says. Study this Quran. It's, it's so beautiful. There's so much information in there. It's your manual for life. It tells you how to live your life. And if you apply it to yourself, you don't have a good life. Okay? You don't have heaven within yourself if you apply it. So we'll close with Surah 35 by Yat 3. This is letter Rahman Rahim. O men, call to mind the favor of Allah to you. Is there any creator besides Allah who provides for you from the heaven and the earth? There is no God but He. How are you then turned away? Shukran, you comment to select.